Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. So in this video, we're going to go over what we did um, as far as painting, um, when we painted the room, when we painted the cabinets, and um, of course, uh, in this frame here, we're trying to level out the cabinets that we have. Um, and we also had to kind of measure out what we were going to do with the pieces that we had. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, use all of the cabinets that we had. Uh, that was due to, of course, uh, the size of the kitchen that we wanted, and then also due to space. Um, so this is gonna be like an open concept with the kitchen and the living room. So um, I didn't want the kitchen to kind of overwhelm the living space. So um, we're trying to, in this frame, we're trying to figure out what's the best way to do this with using as much storage as we can with the pieces that we had. Um, so that's what we're doing here, um, as you could see. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we knew what pieces we were going to use because we were going to start to paint. Um, and that was my job was to start priming the cabinets. And I didn't want to just prime and start painting all of the cabinets. I wanted to make sure I was only going to utilize the paint for the pieces that we were going to use. So that's how many uh, lowers that we did. Um, and then we had uppers, uh, upper cabinets. Uh, we had to limit how many upper cabinets we were gonna do as well. Um, and that was due to space because uh, we were gonna have the stove, the refrigerator there, and then um, the cabinet space. And I wanted to do floating shelves as well. Um, and I just wanted to do the floating shelves really for aesthetics. I know we could have put like cabinets up there. Um, however, I didn't, you know, just in my mind, I didn't think having that many upper cabinets uh, was going to look nice in this space. Um, because the space is small, right? Because it's a mobile home. You, know, you want it to look nice, but you don't want it to look cluttered. And sometimes I feel like if you have too many upper cabinets, it tends to look cluttered. Okay, so now that we know how many upper cabinets we're going to use and how many lower cabinets, um, I started to prime. And as you could see, the primer here is really thick. Um, and that is on purpose uh, because when you're doing kitchen cabinets and you're painting it yourself, you do want to make sure that you're using like good primer and good paint. Um, I have to say we did do that with the upper cabinets. Uh, I was a little disappointed with the lower cabinets, and that was because, um, not because of the primer, but because of the paint that we used for the lower cabinets. Um, I love the color, because the color I chose was navel, uh, which is the color I really wanted. However, um, trying to do stuff on the cheap side, we actually found the navel color um, at a flea market. Um, it was exactly the color I wanted and just am the amount that we needed. So it was only like $5. So I was like, well, okay, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and buy this and use this for the cabinets. Um, and in hindsight, uh, we really shouldn't have done that. We really should have gotten the good paint that we had for the upper cabinets um, that we should have used for the lower ones. But, you know, lesson learned. And I can, honestly, I can always go sand my lower cabinets later and then actually use the good paint. So, you know, I can always go back and do that. So it's not like a huge deal. Um, I still think the kitchen looks great. Um, but the issues we had was uh, chipping. Um, because, you know, you're, you're constantly opening the doors and stuff like that. So, um you know, once I show you guys the reveal, you'll see kind of what I'm talking about. It's just like the little chips and stuff like that and the paint not really lasting that long. Um, so, but, you know, in maybe in a few months time, 
uh, once we've done the bathrooms and stuff, I'll actually probably go back and sand and then use like the really good paint for the lower cabinets as well. And I have to tell you guys the honest truth with like painting your own cabinets. Um, this is something that a lot of YouTube videos I found uh, weren't really honest about. Um, or at least the ones I've seen. Um, and this is my tip for you guys. Um, it has to cure. Um, nobody really tells you that. I mean, they kind of show you. Like, this is what I used, and this is the result, and it looks great. Um, but nobody ever really tells you, like, how long you're supposed to let things sit and dry before you move on to the next coat, and then the next coat. Um, that is one thing that I learned in doing these cabinets. Um, it is very different from just, like, painting your house. When you're painting your cabinets, and especially if you're doing color. Now, the white is, you know, you have the primer, and you're doing double coats of primer, and then you're painting the white. It's, I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is. You're not going to see those little things that you would see if you had a colored cabinet. So, with the blue, and, you know, that might be due to the cheap paint as well. However, I do feel like if I had let it sit and cure like it was supposed to um, this process would have been a lot easier for us um, but it was also you know our fault in trying to rush to get this done because um, you know we didn't have a kitchen for like a long time since with you know since we bought the house so we were really ready to get this kitchen done we were really ready to start cooking because we were tired of eating out um, you know, the, it was all those combinations of why we didn't really wait for it to cure. And honestly, even in reading the directions on, you know, the paint itself, it tells you to, you know, wait a day or something like that. Um, I would even say, honestly, if you do the primer, um, the first coat, I would wait like a day and a half, two days, really. I would wait two days, sand it, and then do your second coat two days, and then sand it. Like, I would really wait like two days of curing before you actually move on to the next step and the next step. Um, you know, we tried to wait as much as we can. I thought it was dry, so I didn't think it was a big issue. However, like looking back at it, um, we really didn't give it the time it needed to actually soak in into these cabinets but you know lesson learned okay so i have to talk to you guys about like the painting in the room as well so what we did was we used you know the sprayer for the ceiling um i honestly don't think that was the best idea i don't know if it was the machine he was using, the sprayer he was using, or was it the paint? I don't know what it really was, um, but I just felt like he was over spraying a little bit. And then I actually had to go back and like use the roller um, over top of this just to kind of smooth it out because I started to see like heavy, you know, paint uh, drips. Uh, from where he was already spraying. So we did do this with the ceiling. And honestly we just you know, said okay look it's already up there. Let's just finish the ceiling. And um, we actually tried to do this on the walls. Um, but like I said it was just over spraying. Um, and I don't know if you guys have any tips. Of what we could have done um with this machine or with the sprayer or if there's another sprayer you recommend uh, let us know in the comments um, I just think that it was just over spraying it worked great on the outside because we were outside I guess it sprayed a lot more evenly but when we were in you know closed corners like this uh, I just felt like it was over spraying uh, everything so yeah just let me know in the comments what you guys think 
uh, what you've used, uh, it would, you know, I think it would help a lot of people out in the future if they try to actually do this for themselves. Um, I think it looked good, but however, like I said, I did go over it with a roller um, a few times. So it wasn't like he just sprayed and we went along. It was, we really had to go over this with the roller just to make sure there weren't any clumps, any over, you know, overspray of like paint and it was dripping. Uh, so, you know, let me know. So for the, like I said, for the walls, we actually um, went ahead and just did it with a roller for the walls. Um, I don't know. I don't really don't like painting. I don't know. I, I know that's what a lot of people like to do versus all the, of the other stuff that we did. Uh, you know, sheetrock and sanding and mudding. Um, I don't know. It's something about painting for some reason. You would think that painting would be awesome and then you'll you kind of see with the results what it's, what it's going to look like and you're getting excited because it's almost finished. Um, but I just like... I don't know. I loathe like painting uh, because you have to do multiple coats too. It's not like you're just doing one coat or even two coats. I think we did like three coats, to be honest, on the walls. We did three coats on the walls and then the ceiling, we did two coats. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, it's I don't know. I think I just have to like maybe get a. A, a different maybe I should do it like a different way maybe there's something I don't know that you guys might know that would be better tools to paint that would make it easier um, if you you know if you have any ideas or if you've done something already where you've used a certain tool to to paint uh, let me know in the comments if uh, if you've used other things besides rollers or in the spray gun so here um, I did my first coat sanded and I did my second coat and I sanded and now I'm ready to do the color navel for the lower cabinets. So I love this color um, and I actually saw this on a YouTube video. Um, I thought when she did it, it looked beautiful um, in her kitchen and I just loved it. And when I saw the video, I was like, yes, that's what I want my kitchen to be. Um, we were going to do all white, um, but some, there was something about this blue when I saw it on the video. Um, I just said, yes, uh, it's going to look a lot much better to have the lower cabinets be a different darker color um, with the contrast of the white cabinets on top. And I can't wait for you guys to see the results um, when I actually do my reveal. Uh, now, it looks a little light um, in this first coat. But, I mean, that's typical, especially when you're putting it on top of the primer. Um, so I did do, honestly, I did, I did three coats of this blue um, just to get it that deep, dark blue I really liked. Um, Oh, and, and just in case you're wondering, it's so it's the color navel, and I use Sherwin, so um, that was in their color line. Now, like I said, um, and you'll probably see that what I mixed, what that color was mixed with, the cheaper paint, and I'll show you guys. Um, and it would have been fine if I was painting my walls, uh, to be honest, but because I was doing the cabinets. Um, I think it was just, you know, the cheaper end of paint in general, and it just did not, you know, stick well or, or what I hoped it to be. Um, but like I said before, it is due to, you know, it being a kitchen cabinet, um, and how many coats you're doing and letting it cure and all of that, so... When you're putting a uh, color over a primer, a white primer, and um, like I've said before, it, it does look lighter and, and kind of more sheer, um, just kind of be patient with that. Um, because I did make the mistake of, 
you know, painting this and then trying to do it again, like right away to do not like a second coat, but just to make it darker, um, if that makes sense. That's what I was trying to do, but I just want to let you guys know that it's okay for this first coat to be this way. Um, and I know it might be annoying to you because you're like, it's not the color I want. Why is it so light? But just take your time with it. Um, you know, it's going to look like this until you really do that third and possibly fourth coat. Uh, just to let you guys know, just kind of be patient with it. Um, I made that mistake and then it ended up looking really bad um, when I first did that because I realized that it was get, it was starting to look spotty. Uh, so that's just one of my little notes that I wanted to give you guys about, you know, painting color. Uh, you know, you're not going to get that color right away uh, unless it's like some light cream, buttercream color or something like that. Because if you're doing a darker color, it is going to take multiple coats to get to that color that you want. So I should probably tell you guys too that I know it looked like fast um, how we decided which cabinets to choose. Um, but it was not an easy task. We actually took like a whole day of measurements and putting pieces in, taking pieces out. Um trying to figure out what was going to be the best for this kitchen as far as space that we needed, space that we had. Um, that actually took us like a whole day to figure out. Um, and it was due to a lot of things. Uh, I have to say um, one of the issues, not issues, but I would say one of the things, humps that we came upon was this sink um cabinet uh, as you can see the pipes and stuff like that um, my husband actually had to um, make holes and add uh, pieces to make sure that these pipes were going to uh, fit in this cabinet and then also that the sink was going to reach these pipes um, so that was a little thing that you know we had to figure out too um, as far as this whole kitchen sink thing. Uh, and then we also wanted it to also be, you know, right below that window. Uh, that's what I've always imagined was having that sink right where that window was. Um, because we also thought about moving it over, you know, should we move it over? Um, if you guys remember, there's a hot water it, right there. You could see there on the left, um, that is our hot water uh, heater. Uh, it's very small, but it was kind of a pain because, you know, trying to put this cabinet in and then having that little piece on the corner and then trying to figure out our whole counter. That was the issue too, is what we were going to do with the counter. You know, the um, because, you know, you guys... I showed you that before that we we bought um, the butcher block counter for um, our kitchen counter. So we had to figure all of that out. So it did not take, you know, 10 minutes, as you saw. It, it did take us a long time. I'll show you guys in a reveal later, but just a little sneak peek there. You can see those cabinets that I put in the foyer. That was from the kitchen. Um, I didn't want to throw away all of the pieces that we couldn't use. So we actually used two of the uppers um, for uh, a pantry that we put in the foyer. And it actually worked out great, like as far as space and what we needed. Uh, because we had to limit our space in the kitchen, uh, we didn't have like a proper pantry. So we actually ended up sanding and painting and making that uh our pantry and I'll show you guys that in the reveal uh, what we did with those two cabinets uh, but there were a few other pieces that we couldn't use um, and my husband plans to actually use those in his uh, shed so I might record that and actually show you guys uh, you know what he does with those cabinets and how he puts that in his uh, work shed 
Okay, so what you guys are seeing here is just me, you know, priming um, all of the face cabinets, the drawers. Um, there's really not much to go over. It really is the same as what I've said before with the primer and the sanding. And, uh, you know, like I said, hindsight, we really should have waited two days before sanding and then doing the second coat. Um, I really wish we would have waited, but, you know, lesson learned in regards to that. I did take all of my uh, pieces outside um, to paint, uh, and that was due to, you know, the smell. Um, it was starting to really smell in the house, and the house is small. So, um, you know, if you are if you got a lot of space in your house and you're painting, that's fine. But if you're in a small house like us, uh, it is better to paint outside. Um, that way you don't have all the fumes going in and, um, you know, making it hard for you to breathe inside. So I did take out all of the face um, cabinets here and then took them outside to paint. And uh, luckily we have like a carport. So I was able to kind of put it underneath the carport in case it rained. Um, and it did rain on us on the second day when we were we were just about to finish these cabinets and it started raining. So we had to like hurry up and put it underneath the carport um, to dry. And then we had to put like plastic over top of it, um, you know. But, you know, unfortunately we had to run and do that. And then we actually had to re repaint a couple of them because they have got, they got wet. And then you could see like the rain spots on them and everything. So... But yeah, I mean, I, well, luckily we had the carport to cover a lot of it, but it was because we had so much, so many things going on in that car, carport as well, because we still had our lumber, we still had our drywall, you know, all of that stuff in that carport section. But, you know, you do the best you can, and, you know, you can't control the weather. So uh, I think even though we had to repaint a couple of them, it was fine. So there is one thing that I wanted to note for you guys that, um, so where we live is in Florida, it's hot and it's humid. Um, if this had been the summertime, um, which if you've ever been to, um, Florida at that time, um, it's not the best, you know, weather condition for painting. And I say that because of the humidity. Um, so after doing this, I really thought about if I were to do this in the summer, uh, it would have taken a lot longer uh, due to drying. Um, you could probably have, you know, dried it inside if you had space to put all of these cabinets in inside and dry it with the air conditioner on. But if you're in a space like we are in a mobile home and you don't have the capacity to do it inside, um, and is actually better for your health because of all those fumes. If you have to do it outside, I would say wait until the summer, I mean, not the summer, the winter time would probably best be best for you. Um, I just think because of the humidity, uh, when I was doing this, I actually thought about that. Like, hey, if it was like really hot, do you think like um, the paint would actually dry as quickly as it did? Um, you know, cause even when you're doing it outside in the winter time, like I said, I think two days in between would have been perfect. 
Um, but we only waited like a day and a half and then started to do the, you know, sanding and then repainting and all of that. So that's just something for you to think about if you're, if, you know, it, you're in that, you know, type of weather that we are in. Um, I would definitely wait until the winter time. I did want to show you guys before um, I leave off in this video here um, the paint that I did use uh, for the lower cabinet and the upper cabinet and then the flood bottle which uh, helps with streaking. So this is the cheap one that I was telling you guys about that I got at the flea market. I wish I wouldn't have used this for the bottom cabinet. Um, it just wasn't good at all. Uh, this is the flood bottle. This helps with streaks when you're rolling or you're brushing your cabinets. I do recommend you guys putting that in. Um, and look at the label to see how much you have to put in. Because um, obviously it depends on how much paint you have. Uh, that is what we use for the upper cabinets. The paint is great. It's amazing. It's thick. It's, it's what you need for your upper cabinets. But that's all I'm going to leave you guys with today, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for joining.